So for my story tonight, I'd like to take us all back to a slightly less insane election season, to a year when the candidate with the hair was not Donald Trump, but was instead a smooth-talking trial attorney turned senator from North Carolina named John Edwards. Now, most of us probably remember how the John Edwards story ended with voters. You know, there was the mistress, and then there was the illegitimate child, and then there was a whole, you know, unfortunate situation with six felony counts of violating federal election law. Um, but <laughs> before all of that went down, there, there was a time when a lot of Democrats really liked John Edwards and really liked what he had to say and hoped that he might be a front runner for the presidential nomination in, in 2008. Um, not me, though. I like to think I was ahead of the game in realizing that John Edwards was probably a schmuck. Why? Because I once spent an afternoon digging a grave with John Edwards. A grave for a dog who was not yet dead. But, <laughs> but I should start at the beginning. So <laughs> in, in 2003, I was in my early 20s, and I was teaching middle school in inner city Boston and growing increasingly frustrated with national policies that I saw leaving my students without access to health care and with siblings shipping off to war every week. And so I did what any self-respecting idealist in their early 20s should do, and I sold everything that I owned that didn't fit in my Dodge Neon, and I turned my car north and I drove to New Hampshire to work for the Howard Dean campaign. Uh, yeah, screaming. <laughs> so, so, so seven months later, Dean screamed in Iowa and I was laid off. Um, and all, all of that is another story for another day. Uh, but in the meantime, I ended up living in a politically important early primary state with a lot of political connections and a decent amount of political experience. You know, I'd, I'd sat in a smoky room with John Kerry while he unsuccessfully tried to relate to the voters of northern New Hampshire with stories of childhood ski excursions, and I'd conversed with Joe Lieberman's epic jowls, and I had seen the legitimate splendor that was John Edwards' hair glistening in the afternoon sun. Um, so from the beginning, John Edwards always seemed like a little bit much to me. He was like a little too shiny and a little too smooth, and I was a Howard Dean girl through and through in 2004. But fast forward two years to 2006, and the Neon and I were still in New Hampshire. We'd traded you know, presidential politics for steady employment, working at Dartmouth College with undergraduate students on community service projects. And John Edwards was starting his Promise and Opportunity Foundation, and he was, he was talking about poverty in ways we hadn't heard from other candidates on the left. And so when two of my students came to me and asked if I might help them set up a community service project that they could do with John Edwards while he was on campus starting his, the Dartmouth chapter of his foundation, I said, sure, and I'm happy to help. So I, so I made some calls, and I reached my, my buddy, Daniel, who ran a nonprofit that completed home repairs for people with you know, with volunteer labor, and he said, oh, yeah, I've got, I've got a great project in mind for you, and I have this client, and she needs to have her porch roof taken off and re-shingled, and you can totally do it with volunteers in an afternoon. It's going to be great. To warn you in advance, he did say, the client is a tiny bit of an animal hoarder, and, and I was like, you know, no worries. I mean, John Edwards, he is a man of the people. He loves animal hoarders. This is going to be great. It's not going to be an issue. Not going to be an issue at all. Uh, so the day of the project on, you know, bright and sunny and perfect for this volunteer project, and I showed up early to talk to Daniel's volunteer foreman, who's a seasoned roofer, who's up on the roof already checking it out. Um, and right on time, John Edwards' convoy pulls up in this series of shiny SUVs and out tumble all the enthusiastic student volunteers and our local state senator, and then John Edwards himself in this, you know, really crisp brand new flannel shirt and shiny brand new boots and, and legitimately amazing hair. And uh, fairly immediately things started to go slightly sideways. Uh, Daniel's client came out of the house trailed by like somewhere between 10 and 35 dogs. <laughs> and you know she looked at us and she looked at John Edwards and she looked at the roofer who's up you know throwing shingles down off her porch and she said you know it's really great that you guys are here to work on my roof, but I was really actually hoping that there was, you know, something that's a little more useful that I thought maybe you could do for me, um, maybe in addition to the roof or, you know, maybe instead of the roof today. Um, and she said, you know, every winter I have a couple of dogs who don't make it, and it's, um, it's really hard to bury them when the ground is frozen. And it starts to get really crowded in the freezer in my kitchen, <laughs> and I'm trying to fit their bodies in there. You know, I... Like, it just doesn't really work. 
Um, so I was hoping that maybe you could, you could just dig a few graves for me while you're here, you know? I, that would be really the best thing you could do. So to John Edwards' credit, you know, he didn't, he didn't bat an eye as she showed us, like, the section of the yard that was designated as the pet cemetery, you know, nor as she summoned over the dogs that she thought, like, were, you know, maybe not going to make it through the winter. <laughs> <laughs> Like, so we could accurately measure, you know, the grave. And nor as she reminded us to, you know, maybe think about the effects of rigor mortis on the paws as, you know, in measuring those dimensions. Nor as the local press arrived to document the entire extravaganza. Um, but as soon as things got real, you know, as soon as we all had our shovels and John Edwards had his shovel and... We were standing there and we're, you know, marking out uh, rectangles on the ground and we start to dig and we're having these conversations like, does rigor mortis affect a dog's tail? Like, <laughs> does it need to be long? And we're calling over the dogs and they're like kind of sniffing and like peeing on their, gra you know, future grave sites and we're like, you know, trying to measure them without, you know, making them feel bad about their prospects for living through the winter. <laughs> then John Evers was out. He was done. He, uh, somehow he found a piece of wood. I'm not really sure how, because neither of the projects that we had been tasked with actually involved wood, but he found a board and he took one end and our state senator took the other end and they started just prancing around in a circle in front of the client's house. You know, they, they held the board on their shoulders and they posed <laughs> and like snap, 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 snap. The local press took pictures of them and they, they held the board over their heads like they were participating in some kind of uh, you know, primitive barn raising and, you know, snap, 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 snap. The local press took pictures. And, and on and on this went with us, us digging and the dogs, like, frolicking and kind of jumping over the graves and, like, sniffing them and going in and out. And, and Edwards and our state senator just, like, walking around in a circle doing stuff with this piece of wood. Um, and then, so about halfway through the afternoon, Edwards' convoy returned, ostensibly just to make sure that he was going to be able to get out of there on time to make it to his presentation at the college that evening. And, you know, he took one last look at us digging the graves and the one last look at the dogs and one last look at this piece of wood. And, and he, was just, he was just completely done. And he threw down the board and he rounded up all his volunteers and he stuck them in his SUVs and he grabbed the state senator and he hit the road, uh, leaving three dogs with, you know, mostly finished final resting places and a woman with no porch roof and Daniel and I with a lot of work to, to finish up that afternoon. And at the time I thought, you know, this is, this is politics as usual. You know, I mean, John Edwards is a busy guy. Like, maybe he just doesn't have time to dig a, dig a grave for every dog, you know. <laughs> but later on, when everything else came out about him, I thought, you know, sometimes if you can't be trusted with the small stuff, you, you really can't be trusted with the big stuff either. So, thanks. <laughs>